Hi, I'm Chris Kirkman with AETutsPlus.com, and in this tutorial we'll be looking at how to create complex visual patterns with a relatively simple expression controlled by sliders, tied into Particular 2.0. Now, as a kid, you might remember the Spirograph, the little templated toy where you have one circle in the gear of another circle, and you stick your pencil in a hole and, and draw these complex uh, circular repeating patterns. Well, this is basically just that. In the mathematical world, these shapes are called hypotrochoids and endotrochoids. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm not a mathematician, so we'll do what we can. Uh, an example uh, would be right here on the screen. So what you're looking at is uh, the essentially a pen made up of particles drawing on the screen. These complex and slightly offset lines. Uh, these visual patterns are, are pretty intricate and uh, cool to look at and there's a lot of things you can do with particular in order to enhance these. Uh, we're going to stick with just how to create the simple shapes and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. I want to get a quick shout out to Dan Eberts. Um, Dan is a motion scripting expert. Uh, you can find his website at www.motionscript.com. There's lots of uh, uh, other formulas there, lots of motion scripting um, uh, uh, scripts that you can apply to your own projects. Um, he helped me in this case with some of the scaling and he also he did a similar version of this tutorial or a, uh, uh, application I should say uh, to the write on plugin for After Effects uh, to create these same shapes. Uh, in my case I'm doing them in 3D space with the trap code particular and uh, let's take a look at it now. Thanks again Dan. Okay let's start off with a new project and new comp. We'll call this new comp Spyro. And to avoid any legal complications, you won't hear me say the name Spirograph from here on out. Okay, 720 by 480s are NTSC DV, that's basically default. Make your comp 20 seconds. Uh, that way we have enough time for the pen to work its way around and actually start creating these shapes, these, these weavings, these webbings that we want to uh, produce. Click OK. And in your Spyro comp, I'm going to create a new null. Click on your null, we're going to name that uh, Spyro controller. All right. Now, the first thing that we need to do is uh, apply sliders that are going to control how this effect works. So, in your effects control panel, you can either go up to effect. Expression controls, slider control, which we'll put one in there. Or if you go to your effects and presets panel over here, you can just type in slider. And if you spell it correctly, you'll see slider. And you can just drag and drop. Now click on your new slider control and hit enter to rename. We're going to call this fixed radius. And we're going to set the value. Uh, this is just for our own purposes. Uh, you can the numbers can be anything, but the slider to the to dragging back and forth, we want it to to stay within a, a particular constraint, and that's going to go for all the variables we're creating. Uh, for this one, let's just do zero and five hundred. Okay, click on your fixed radius and duplicate Command D or Control D, depending on if you're a PC or Mac person. Hit Enter to rename, and we're going to call this moving radius. Okay, duplicate one more time. Call this point offset. I'll explain a little bit about what these are. Uh, go back real quickly. We're going to edit the value of the moving radius. This one's going to be slightly different. We're going to go into the negative range here, negative 100 to positive 100. And for our point offset, we're going to make this negative 50 to positive 50. Now those are the very basic controls for this shape of this formula. The fixed radius is the large circle. Um, if you remember the toy as a kid, you'll probably remember there was a, uh, the, the template was just basically a hole in a piece of plastic with little gear teeth. 
and then what you chose from your little palette of shapes were these other little pieces of plastic usually in a circle format with different uh, amounts of teeth around the outer edge or sometimes it was a triangle or uh, like a rounded square something along those lines that the teeth fit into that went around the inside of the circle and then inside of that plastic shape were holes to place your pencil and you basically you know move your pencil in a circle and it would follow the shape of the outer circle along the constraints with the inner shape the inner circle uh, with the amount of gears however size it was and you had different holes that you could stick the pencil into so fixed radius large circle moving radius smaller circle that actually moves around and the point offset which is where you place your pen okay now we need two additional variables here now the first one is the speed variable, and this allows us to control how fast the pen is moving on the paper. So let's duplicate the point offset, and we're going to call this speed. And this should stay at a relatively low number because it's a multiplier. So we're going to do edit value, and slider range 0 to, let's just say, 10 for now. That's probably more than enough. Duplicate your speed value, and this is going to be your scale value. And same thing here, edit your value. You want the scale to be 1 to probably no more than 5. All right. As I mentioned, the speed controls how fast the pen moves along that circle. In the scale case, uh, let's say you get a neat shape. Uh, looks like your grandmother's doilies. And, uh, but it's very small on the screen, and you want to scale that up. Now, it would be really kind of difficult to change your fixed radius and change your moving radius and change your point offset to retain that same shape only on a larger scale to fill up more of your screen. That's why we add the scale property. This allows us to um, scale up or down as a whole rather than trying to recreate that shape just on a larger scale with the other two radiuses. Okay. Now that we have our variables we can move on to something a little more fun and that's our particles. So we're going to add a new solid Make sure you hit make comp size, be whatever name, color you want it. I usually keep mine gray and just to let me know that it's a, I use this as a, a tool as opposed to a color layer of some sort. Okay, I'm just going to drag this below the controller and I'm going to call it particles. Straightforward. Now we're going to apply particular. In this case, I'm going to use my effects and presets panel. I'm going to type in particular and spell it correctly there we go particular drag and drop and if you scrub here you're going to see your basic point cloud your uh, you know blast of particles water spraying right at you what have you pretty boring now what we're going to modify in order to make these shapes is the xy position of the emitter of the particle layer so let's rotate down or twirl down your emitter and you'll see position xy okay that's where we're going to be applying this um, super formula. Hold the Alt or the Command key on your Macintosh and click on the stopwatch for position XY. Okay, and that opens up down here your expression panel, your area for the formula. Um, we have to create the variables that are going to be used for this shape generator and we have to tie them into our controller. Um, that's real easy to do using the pick whip, um, but I'll explain what's going on as we go forward. Um, once the formula has been typed in its entirety, I would just suggest using your pause button so that you can get exactly what it says on the screen and uh, uh, you know double check that the formula is correct because even a missed parenthesis or a bad uh, minus sign or something will throw this all off. So uh, let's start by adding the fixed radius. We'll call it fr equals and then we're going to, I should have done this before, ignore that error for the moment, twirl down or just uh, select your spiral controller and hit E for effects and you're going to want to see all the sliders so select all these and twirl down one which will twirl all of them down so you can see the slider values for each one of these. Okay, Go back to your position XY and I'm going to shrink this up a little bit so we can see it all and we're back to the fixed radius Yes, yes, I know. Thank you. Fixed radius equals. Grab your pick whip and drag it until you see the slider and right over the top of fixed radius. And it immediately fills everything in for you, which is real handy because it's a lot of typing. 
Go down to your next line. We're going to do the same thing for moving radius. So MR equals pick whip. Find your moving radius slider. Done there. And now our offset, we'll just call O for offset. Scroll up, find your point offset slider. Boom. Next one down. This is our speed. Speed just a hint different. Again, SP equals, and you're going to find up your speed slider. Now, speed is a function of time. So we have to multiply that value by the time of your comp. And this is what causes it to actually be drawn over time. That's all we need there. Hit enter, and now your scale, we'll call it SC equals. Grab your pick whip, and up to slider. Okay. And we're done with the variables, now the primary variables, but there is a little hitch in this, and that's that when the fixed radius or the moving radius, the, the multiplication and the division and all the stuff that's going to happen in a moment with the, the next couple of lines, if it ever hits a point that in mathematics is called a non-zero value, it causes it to break. You'll get errors. And... Um, when you're sliding up and down to get the right shape, it's kind of annoying because you'll accidentally cross over zero at any given point and it'll pop up that error and then you have to reset the formula. So in order to avoid that entirely, we're going to add a couple of if statements. If moving radius is equal to, that's two equal signs, zero, close parentheses there, then immediately set moving radius to one. So if at any time it hits zero, Ignore the zero and immediately go to one. Pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for the fixed radius. If parentheses fixed radius is equal to zero, close parentheses, fixed radius equals one. So that's just a little, you know, error uh, prevention for the future. Now here comes the big part. Um, this is a long line of code, but this is what actually creates the shapes on the screen by doing complex mathematical computations. Um, the x value, x equals fixed radius plus moving radius times math dot cosine times, or in this case it's in parentheses, the speed minus, parenthesis, moving radius, plus offset, parenthesis, times, math, dot, cosine. Now there are three open parens here. One, two, three. Fixed radius, plus moving radius, close parenthesis, one, divided by moving radius, close parenthesis, two, times speed close parenthesis three. That's a lot. I know. Oops. Um, fortunately, for, to get the Y, all we need to do is copy and paste this, change the Y, uh, the X to Y, and change cosine to sine. Now, some of you math heads out there might know what's going on here. I honestly don't. This formula has been around for ages, uh, dates back to probably Greek mathematicians, you know, beyond my knowledge, all calculus. But I know that it works, and I know that it's cool. So now that we have those two variables being generated, all we have to do is apply them to the x and y position of the emitter directly. Um, before we do that, though, this is based, the, the formula is based on a zero, zero center. And After Effects doesn't quite work like that. So we need to get the center point of our comp and add that to the zero, zero values that are created from this formula. So we do that by doing bracket this comp dot width divided by two. So getting half of the width. And I'll spell width correct there. Okay. And then this comp dot height divided by two. So the center in the up and down now. Add that to the x and y values that we just got. And then a quick multiplication by the scale. 
And this is what we talked about before, where we can take everything and make it bigger without having to modify the shape at all. That's it. Hmm. Apparently not. Uh, let's see. Line 11. Where is the error here? Ah, rookie mistake. Uh, keep in mind that when you're doing expressions, you need to make sure you put your semicolons in. So uh, I've gone ahead and done that uh, real quickly. Uh, and that should solve the problem. Okay. Now, I'm going to close up this just to kind of clean things up just a little bit. And if we scrub through our timeline, nothing. And there's a good reason for that. Um, all of our values in our spiral controller here are set to zero. And that being said, let's add some values. Uh, first thing, scale, got to be at least one, you know, one for one. Speed, same thing. It's not, if it's not moving, it's not going to do anything. Now, in your fixed radius, in my example that I showed earlier, uh, the fixed radius is 181. Now, by itself, we should now start to see, yes, the emitter is moving in a circle. And that's it, really. It's a perfect circle. And that's okay because we haven't added an inner circle for it to go around. So assuming that inner circle has a zero, all we're doing is tracing the inside of that first fixed circle. Which is okay. Sure, you can create a circle, no big deal. Um, let's get a little fancier though. Again, back to my original example. The moving radius was at 58. And if we do that, now we start to see that if the circle is now moving, it's also traveling in a circle. The pen's still not offset, but that's okay. We're seeing like some humps as it's going around a circle, like f uh, flower petals around uh, the center of a flower. Okay, finishing off from where I had it, uh, the point offset in my original example was seven. Uh, I jumped the speed up just a little bit to a three, and the slider uh, on the scale remains at zero. So now what you're seeing, there's a lot of stuff going on here, and it's hard to see exactly what's going on, but you can kind of imagine it as a little bit of a four-leaf clover. The problem is that the particles are going everywhere. So the next step in this process is to get those particles down to something a little more manageable. Um, stop their velocity, stop them from traveling off on their own to make them look like more of a line being drawn. Or tighten them up depending on how your particular project needs them. So clicking back over to our particles layer, I'm going to up the particles here to 300 um, just to give them a little more thickness. And the most important part, we're going to drop the velocity in every aspect here down to zero. And immediately what you start to see is that things are coming right together. Uh, when the particles aren't flying off on their own, um, you start to see those lines being drawn. Now, you don't really get the effect here because the lines aren't staying on long enough. In this case, the particle life is a little too quick. And by default, particle life is set to three seconds. So we're going to jump that up. Go under Particle and up here where it says life. Let's change that to the life of our comp, which is 20 seconds. And now we're going to start to see some real complex patterns. It's the same pattern being looped over and over again, but it creates this webbing that has a, a real nice kind of look to it. I'm also going to drop the size of the particles down to about, let's say, two. Um, you start to see the dots in here, and that's all right. We're going to scale this down. It's a little bit big. Um, we can do that one of two ways. We can either go back to the spiral controller and we can change this uh, scale slider, let's say to 0.5. That'll keep the shape and then it'll really smoothen uh, the transition of the, the separation between the particles out. Looks like a much thicker line. Um, if we didn't do that, let's go back to one here. We can also do the speed. Now when we change the speed, you'll notice if I go back down to one, things will tighten up considerably, but you won't have as many iterations of that shape. Um, it does create a much smoother looking shape, but you don't get uh, layer upon layer. Uh, the other way we can do that is we can try and adjust the fixed radius and the moving radius to keep that same basic percentage. This is based on a percentage, so if we kept that same uh, ratio, we could get that, but that, that's really complicated and we don't want to get into that. So for the moment, let's just, uh, let's take the speed back up to, let's say two, we'll compromise here. 
and uh, we're going to take the slider for scale down to half. There we go. That's pretty good. We're getting a lot of overlapping shapes, and uh, it gives us something to play with. Now that we have and we know that the formula is working, we can make all kinds of changes. Uh, we can scale this up. Scale this up. That's interesting. We can even go into negatives here. Let's go to negative 50. And things get a little more angular here in the negatives because now you're outside of that circle instead of inside of that circle. And you can kind of tell if you look at these rounded edges here, you can kind of imagine that as your your smaller circle, your moving radius, being outside, and that's the curve of that. The the more we increase this, the wider that will be. And I, I say increase, I, I should mean decrease in the negative, but you can see that, that the value of that circle would be getting pretty wide here. That's how you get your stars, more angular, angular shapes. Um, let's bring this back down say uh, negative 5, Oop, that's negative 50, we've already been there, negative 5, now we're getting more of a circle, because we're closer to that that zero point in all the situations here. I'm going to bring our fixed radius way down, and then you can play with the offset, you can really um, jack it up to get these uh, more contained shapes. Uh, bottom line is just play with it, uh, <laughs> that sounds dirty. Uh, Experiment. How's that? Um, you can get flower shapes, star shapes. Uh, I've gotten these uh, uh, three-point, um, uh, I don't know what to call them, uh, uh, three-point ovals, maybe. Um, let's try like uh, 43. Uh, well, that's interesting. Uh, negative uh, 14. There we go. 53. Yeah, we we'll get some of that, and let's scale it up too, so that we can kind of see the shape better. That's really interesting. So now that you got your shape the way you want it, you can go back to your particles, and change all kinds of stuff. Change the size, obviously, uh, um, the type of shape that appears. Maybe we wanted a star. Um, that's a little much, or. Uh, I would just change the color. We can do uh, color over life, and we get our default colors here, and rainbow colors. Um, uh, I like, uh, like with my example, I did something to this effect. Uh, I'll just choose a, a red here, keep the yellow, make this a white. That'll be our pen tip. Really bring it in close, and maybe make this a little darker so it looks like it's fading off into something or into nothingness. So some really really nice shapes here that that change over time. Um, you can also try animating the controls over time. Um, they, you might get to see some jerkiness in that just because it's suddenly changing its shape, uh, but uh, you can get some interesting dynamic effects by doing that. Uh, but bottom line is experiment, um, and uh, now you've got your uh, your own little virtual spiral. Uh, check that your own virtual hypotrochoid or endotrochoid generator in After Effects. So uh, have fun with that. If you come up with any uh, interesting ways to use this. Um, Oh, certainly let us know. Post a comment in the section below. Um, also, uh, come visit me. I'm over at the Motion Exchange. That's www.themotionexchange.com. Uh, that's a good place for uh, uh, motionographers, uh, animators, uh, everybody to network, get new clients, uh, uh, just chat, trade stories, trade uh, demo reels, that type of thing. Uh, check us out there. Uh, that's it for me. Again, I'm Chris Kirkman with aetutsplus.com, and we'll see you next time.